Suppose we want to create a function which takes in a list of int and then returns a description of the list as a string. Also suppose that the description contains the number of items in the list and if it is not empty it also contains the value of the first item. So if we give the function an empty list it returns the string the list is empty. If we give it a list containing a single element it returns a description highlighting that the list has one element and then it gives the value. If we give it a list with more than one item it returns a string which describes the number of items in the list and then also gives the value of the first item and only the first item. So let's go ahead and implement this function. We are naming the function description and for the type signature we can see we will take a list of int and return a string. For the case with an empty list it is easy. We know we can just pattern match on the empty list and return the desired string. Similarly for the case where there is only a single item in the list we can create a pattern which matches it and returns the desired string. We match on x cons the empty list so this represents a single item list exactly. We call the function show x to convert the first and only item in the list from int to string and we use the concatenation operator to join the two strings the one on the left and the one produced by the call to show x to get our final string. Now for the case where we have more than one element in the list things get interesting. Let's take a minute to understand what exactly is going on here. The thing that will stand out here is the use of a new type of pattern. We deconstruct the list like normal with the x cons x's here and if we were to leave it as this we now have variable names which we can use in our function body to refer to the first item in the list and the rest of the list. But remember we also need to get the count of the number of items in the list and so we need a way to bind a variable name to the whole list not just to its constituent parts. This is done with what is known as an as pattern. An as pattern gives a binding to the whole list and also allows you to destructure the list into its parts as we have done here. The syntax for an as pattern is to place the variable name for the whole list first and then an at symbol followed by the destructuring pattern that you desire. So the list variable name here refers to the whole list. I could have called it anything but I just called it list for simplicity. And the x cons x's refers to the destructured first item of the list cons the rest of the list. Now within our function body we can use the list x and x's bindings and that is what we do to get the desired string result. We make use of a WHERE clause to define a value which I have called LENGTH S. This is the number of items in the list as a string. We use the LENGTH function to get the number of items but it is an int so we use the SHOW function to convert it to a string. Notice how we are using the variable name LIST to refer to the whole list which we defined using our AS pattern. Then in the function body we refer to LENGTH S and also called SHOW X to get the first item in the list as part of our string. We concatenate the pieces together just like before to get our final string which will match our desired output. We can see that everything works as we expect when we test our functions in GHCI. AS patterns are not restricted for use with lists only. You could, if you wanted to, use them with your own custom algebraic data types. Let's do a similar exercise for a custom algebraic data type that we will call person. A person contains two data values within it, one string which is supposed to be the person's name and one int which is supposed to be the person's age. Now we define a function called describe which takes a person and returns a string. We use an as pattern to bind a variable name to the whole person which I've called p as well as deconstruct the person's constituent parts in our pattern. Then we simply use whatever variable bindings we need in the function body to return our string and the function works as expected. Since we are displaying the name which is a string within the wider string we can see that the quotes are escaped using a backslash. This is expected. So there you have it. You have now understood as patterns quite a simple syntax with a variable name then the at symbol and then the deconstructed pattern that you want. This video is a clip from a longer video for beginners starting with Haskell. Check that out if you would like to see all of the content. Also check out the entire Introduction to Functional Programming with Haskell course on the LIGO Learn channel. See you next time.